Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham. Today I'm going to describe how you can apply a style in WPF to heterogeneous elements. So let's take a look at what I mean. I'm going to add a button to my form here. I'm going to give it a height and a width so it doesn't fill the whole screen. And then what I would like to do is I'd like to apply a style to it. And I'd like that style to be called a common button style. And what I want to do is I want to create this style to be shared across all types of buttons. So let me add another type of button to my form. Let's add a toggle button. Uh, and let's, let's add its style to use the same common button style. And let me give it, let me give this toggle button some content so we can see it. Okay. And you can see that uh, Visual Studio is giving us a blue underline on our styles here because we haven't created a style yet with that key name, which is why it was complaining. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll create a style and I'll say X key. And I'll say this is a common button style. Now normally what you would do for your styles if you wanted them to target a specific type of element is you'd specify a target type here. And I might say target type button. And then I would say maybe setter. And I would say let's set the foreground of this button to say yellow. Well, let's say green so we can see it a little better. Now if I do that, you'll see what happens is the toggle button reference here gets a blue underline. And what it's going to say to us is that the button target type does not match the type of element toggle button. So what happened here is that a toggle button is not a button. There's are two different classes. They're based on a common ancestor, but they are two different element types. And so when we say target type is button in our style, that means it can only be applied to button elements directly and no other sibling classes can use this style. That isn't ideal since we want this to be a common button style. So what we do is just go ahead and remove the target type. When we do that, now that you can see that the toggle button style reference is okay. It's not complaining anymore. It says it can find a style with that key and there's no restrictions on the style as to what type it can be used on. But what you'll notice now is in the style, the property gets underlined and there's a problem here and it says foreground was not found on type framework element. So what that means basically is that a style without a target type specified is going to be applied to framework element, which is going to be your base visual element, and anything below it. But foreground doesn't exist on a framework element. It exists on some derived class. Where it exists actually is a class called control. So if we prefix it here and we say control.foreground, now that's telling WPF when you apply this style, look for the control foreground property on the element and apply the setting to that specific property. Now that we've done that, you'll see that we've gotten rid of all of our underlines and Visual Studio is happy and it looks like we're going to be able to apply our button style to both our button and our toggle button. So when I go ahead and run this, now you'll notice that the toggle button here has a foreground of green and let's give some content to that first button so we can see that the foreground there is set as well. Go ahead and press F5 again. Now you can see they both have that setter of the green foreground being applied from that common style and we called it common button style and we didn't specify a target type. When we don't specify target type, again, you have to give the prefix here of what you want to apply the property to. So we may add one more type of button, something that inherits from control. So we'll go ahead and say radio, just so we know which one's which. And then we're going to use the same common button style here. Now you can see nothing's, nothing's complaining now. We'll go ahead and press F5 to run this again. Now you can see our radio button has taken on that setter as well. So now we've got a, a keyed style or a named style called common button style that can be applied to heterogeneous elements. A button, a toggle button, and a radio button are sibling elements. They inherit from a common ancestor. And we're able to use a style as long as we specify the ancestor that, it inher that we want the property setter to be specified for, we can get this to work. So the ancestor in this case is the control. And we can say control.foreground is equal to green. And there's other things that inherit from control. That's a very base level class. So we could say, we could say have a text box and we could have it use the same style as well. And we'll say style static resource. We'll call this common button style for now, which isn't maybe the best name now that we're using it on a text box. Now, if we go ahead and run this, we should see a text box here. And when I type in this text box, you can see that the foreground is now green. So again, text box also inherits from that common ancestor control, and so it can share the same property setters. Now, if we were going to set 
say we have a setter and we set something that's specific to an inherited type. So we may set content control dot content and we'll set that to you know, default text. Now what's going to happen, let's go ahead and delete the content from our button and leave everything else alone. Go ahead and press F5. Now this is going to run and you'll notice that our first button here, it's not quite long enough. Let's bump this out a little so we can see it. You'll notice that our first button here actually gets the setter from the content control dot content. And then the second one uses its local value for content. And so does the third one. And the text box is not, does not inherit from content control. So the interesting thing here is you won't get a runtime error if you specify a property in a setter and it's applied to an element that doesn't support that property. It will just silently fail. What's interesting about this here is that you're able to use this heterogeneous style and apply it to many different types of elements, even if they don't have the same common ancestor at certain levels. So I have a setter that is only changing the content control content property. So in order for this setter to take effect, the element that this style is applied to needs to inherit from content control. And buttons, in this case, button, toggle button, and radio button, they all inherit from content controls. That's why they have a content attribute that you can set. A text box, however, does not inherit from content control. So it's going to take the first setter, control.foreground, and apply that correctly, as you can see. But it won't do anything with the content setter. It'll just silently ignore that property since it's not an ancestor of the text box. So you can see in WPF, by eliminating the target type property from your styles and just using a key, you're able to to get a heterogeneous style that can be applied to multiple different types of elements, even if those elements don't inherit from a, the same common ancestor at all levels. So for instance, the button and the text box, they both inherit from control at a base level, but text box is not a type of content control and we're able to mix and match those properties. This isn't necessarily a best practice as far as organization, but it's here to just illustrate the point that you can have these heterogeneous styles that are simply specified by key and then you have to apply those explicitly to the button by using the style uh, attribute and pointing it towards that common style. Now you could also use this in, in a style inheritance chain if you'd like to have this as more of a base style and then inherited name styles that inherit these basic settings for you. Okay, that's all for applying styles to heterogeneous elements in WPF.